<laughs> Hello and welcome. This is one of my 60 inspiring conversations because I am 60 this year and I thought it'd be really, really cool to work, reach out to 60 different people. Some people I hardly know at all. And the lovely lady that I've got with me today, I do know quite well. She is my <laughs> niece, Lucy, and she's actually in the same house as me in another room. We're doing the corner like this. Um, and I do know her fa fairly well, but she is um, an incredibly inspiring lady with an incredible story. So we will dive straight in and just see what comes out of this conversation today. So Lucy, just in case, oh, sorry. Just in case anyone doesn't know who you are, would you like to <laughs> introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you're up to in the world? <laughs> <laughs> I feel very unpracticed at that at the moment, but yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Lucy and I'm an artist and I specialise in seascapes. Um, that's mainly what I spend my time doing and um, it's all Deb's fault because <laughs> oh, look at those beautiful pictures behind you there are two of your gorgeous pictures if that's my fault I take full responsibility cool definitely is there's um like I don't know when it was it feels like me I always think it's about 12 years ago when um you taught me the principles um and then it be four years actually and on January the 15th when I have I've been four years sober so um, yeah, I quit my heavy drinking addiction after getting into the principles and understanding myself a little bit better. And um, yeah, it took eight years to to quit my drinking. But when I did that, that's what happened. My art came out of me. In a nutshell, I don't feel very um, art articulate. Is that the right word? <laughs> Sometimes my words just come out brilliantly and I'm just great. But today I'm just like, I don't even know what I'm saying. So <laughs> all the rawness of me today <laughs> I think raw is good I think raw and real is good because yeah sometimes we can just come across as a really polished and and you know we we never have any ups and downs but life is full of ups and downs isn't it and it's good and I know I've uh, just got off a call with a really really lovely lady who um has is, is having a little bit of a, a medical up and down at the moment and actually hearing you know speaking to her and, and seeing where she can come back to because of what she knows is is incredible and you are someone I have watched do that amazingly well like you definitely sometimes when, when you have a bit of a, a meltdown you do melt down but then when you come back what you see what comes out of the other side of it is absolutely amazing so uh, I think a bit of a meltdown is an understatement Deb I do things really well come on <laughs> <laughs> I don't just do my art really well I do meltdowns really well and it is how it just it seems to be how I do things like I know that's one of the thing that things that me and you have kind of I don't know gone through or whatever and and come up against is how different we are and how we do things so differently like I seem to experience life like really up and down Whereas I'm always like, why is Deb always just so happy all the time? It doesn't matter what happens. She just gets up and it's the same. Whereas I'm just like up and down and up and down and have these struggles and meltdowns. But you're right. I know that one of the things that I do now when I go through my struggles and meltdowns and stuff, um, even in the midst, midst of it, I'm always like, oh, this is going to be amazing when I come through this. <laughs> you know, I just know it's going to it's going to. I don't know it just jolts me up a level and makes me see things even more on a deeper level in a different way so um yeah it's always kind of exciting and and most mostly unless I've got like a story that's going on that's like oh god I can't feel shit because I've got this to do and I'm gonna let people down and whatever if I haven't got that story going on I'm just like I don't really care if I feel shit I'll just mope about and everybody knows about it <laughs> Not very good at hiding things either. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And then and then I produce beautiful pieces of art like the one I started painting yesterday. So yeah, <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> I I think it's I think that's I think it's really important to share that the you know the differences and and all of these things. And I know to me part of the acceptance of all of life has been really really helpful and definitely you and I have been each other's greatest teachers in many many ways I think because of this it's like oh 
oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that has been just, uh, yeah, phenomenal actually to kind of what, what we've learned from each other, I think, is that we have been, <laughs> there's been moments when it hasn't felt like that, but actually, yeah, what, what we have. <laughs> Very good getting pissed off, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like you say, what comes out of it and underneath underneath that, I know, you, you know, um, well, I can only speak for me. I know that I have a deep love and respect for you. And and there are moments, yes, when <laughs> I quite happily strangle you, but, you, you know, underpinning that and knowing that. And, and I think that's part of the learning. I think that's part of the scene to come back to, OK, what is actually true underneath this, underneath what my head is screaming and, and saying. Yeah. That, so. Yeah. Exactly. I know your, um, your journey around alcohol has been... Um, incredibly helpful and inspiring to many many people um and i am going to put in something about our conference here we've got our conference okay. coming coming yeah. up in march and yeah i know i'm so excited our conferences are always like oh my gosh i feel like uh, it's uh, this year we're calling it uh, being you um waking up to what's possible and oh my gosh watching you wake up to what is possible what you have seen through that has been it, it's been an incredible to have like a, a ringside seat if you like in watching that and I know at the conference that you and Beck your amazing sister are gonna we're gonna have um something fantastic is gonna <laughs> involve I, I know what you're gonna be like in that room the two of you so um, do you want to just share a little bit, anything, anything that's coming to you around around that? Just share a little bit around that journey that you've been on, that you know what you've seen around that. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> even though I feel like I'm not articulate today, I always feel like I can talk about my addiction stuff because it feels so clear to me. It feels like something that I've done and I've achieved and I don't know come through or whatever whatever word you want to put on it um but it definitely feels like something I did good at <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, 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 you certainly know, did you certainly did I know that I'm inspiring in that way um uh what was I gonna say so with the addiction stuff okay I'll share this because I was um running a an event last week um so part of my art I know you know anyway Deb but you know people that maybe watch this don't know but um I teach art as well now and I, I think that I teach fun but there you go <laughs> we'll call it <laughs> we'll call it art but I think I teach fun um because everyone has so much fun and I think it's about enjoying the process not not wondering what the product's going to be um where was I going with this so last week I was asked to run um a private event like a Christmas party for like a corporate office thing <laughs> um wow. yeah it was really cool and the there was a couple of guys and and mostly ladies and they were probably I think most of the ladies were in their 20s and <laughs> like I'm 42 and it feels like oh my god they're so young and it's but they were so lovely and they were saying like really awesome things um about their own work and their own creation and I thought I love this because you're not like putting yourselves down which is what most people do and and they weren't they were really creative most of them were really really like well they were all really good in their own ways um and one of them asked me what's your background I think I think she said what's your background then and I was like what do like what do you want to know do you want to know <laughs> from birth or what and and then <laughs> I kind of started sharing my story and I said that four years ago in January I, I got sober um I'd had a massive but you know I'd been drinking heavily for like 24 years and and um I sorted myself out and then my art came from that um and like the ladies and that they were they were kind of like wow that is so inspiring and I was like, oh, thanks. Um, and I don't think I really, like, it seems normal to me. So it doesn't seem that inspiring, I suppose. And then I told them that actually the good part of that story is that I drink again now. And I said, and I think that's quite, um, 
inspiring and I often use the line that if I wasn't me I'd be like so inspired by myself oh I'm really tearful this morning (laughs) (laughs) um and yeah so I shared that actually I drink again now and I said that it feels to me like I healed from the inside so Mm. it feels like I don't I don't know if I know how to put it but it's like I'm not the same person so I don't want to drink and get pissed that's just not the aim of my game whereas before it was always that's what I want to do I want to drink because I want to change feeling Mm. most of the time I don't really care what I feel anymore like I'm not I don't mean I don't care as in it's not important to me I'm just I'm just not bothered because it doesn't look like it really matters um most of the time (laughs) not always (laughs) So I don't know why I would drink and want to change my feelings. So because of that, it gives me the freedom to drink and enjoy a drink for the sake of enjoying a drink, because I do actually like alcohol a little bit, not loads and not very much. (laughs) (laughs) But I feel like the thing that's different for me is I don't feel like I'm drinking for a purpose or a need I'm doing it to enjoy it so when you do something that you enjoy you don't want to constantly do it you appreciate it and you feel gratitude sort of for that in a moment like when I have a cup of coffee I've just had a cup of coffee now and I don't want to go and drink 10 more I just enjoy the coffee so like last night I was putting my Christmas tree up and I was like I'm gonna have a mulled wine had a mulled wine and I enjoyed my mulled wine and that was it I didn't even have I don't have the thought anymore. Oh, let's have another one. Oh, let's do this. Let's get pissed. Let's, you know. Um, and I remember that conversation we had a few weeks ago, Deb. And it really, even though I know this is what goes on, for, this is what went on for me. The words that you put on it gave me an insight of how how it is. And I'm going to be sharing this more at the conference, I think. Um that thing you said about if you had a toothache do you remember that conversation I think you were sharing it with somebody or something and you were telling me about the conversation and I always get the the what I get my words mixed up so bear with me a sec um it's like we try to solve is it the problem or the solution no the solution <laughs> it's it's the, it's the solution you say it, you say it because this puts it's like, so it's like if, if you said like if, if you had got a, a constant nagging toothache and you were yeah. taking paracetamol and someone was saying to you stop taking paracetamol stop taking paracetamol if you stop taking paracetamol then this nagging pain came back it would be really difficult to stop taking the paracetamol and so you're caught you're calling taking paracetamol the problem whereas what the problem is is the toothache and if you solve the toothache yeah. why would you have paracetamol because you don't it it wouldn't make sense to you and that was kind of what I saw was your head did your head in if you like and so you had alcohol so alcohol wasn't really the problem it was it was your head that was the problem yeah as as you started to understand that and see things differently that's not and okay from time to time like all of us your head can be a problem a little bit from time to time but it doesn't look like you know if you get the odd bit of toothache it's like oh well I can start you know it's it it, 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 you've solved what the true problem was and I think that is the thing very often with addiction we look at alcohol or what or drugs or whatever it is we are addicted to as the problem yeah um, and so we're not solving it in, in the right place yeah and when you said that that was like oh yeah that's what I've done that's what makes sense to me and one of the things that like I'm I think I was just saying a little bit about this but I want to say a bit more about this is like the freedom to choose now is so important to me like I'm not this like disrespecting anyone who you know drinks and stops drinking and then never drinks again I think we all have to do what makes sense to us but it was almost like incomplete for me it was like yeah that's great that I can do that and not drink but that's not the full 
it'll be like painting three quarters of a picture for me <laughs> when I paint because it's not where I want to get to it was like I want to get to a place where I can take it or leave it that to me is true freedom mm. um I was still limited where oh no I never drink I never drink and it makes almost like a big drama as well like I, oh no I don't drink I've had this I've had that and I didn't I me personally no one else don't care if anyone else wants to do it their way it's fine but me personally felt like there's more to this there's more what if I can trust myself what if because I've changed as a person I am okay to have a drink and not be like addicted to it anymore um and it was scary I remember like the first time I was having a drink and then it was like <laughs> and you guys like I'm gonna have a drink but what what if I go off the rails again what if this what if that um but I didn't and I haven't done like I I did 18 months completely teetotal in fact I was saying this to a couple the other week um yeah someone that I that I know that I was speaking to the other week and um saying like it looks to me like if you come out of a toxic relationship as well or something, yes, you take some time and you like heal yourself and you have space and you, you know, mm. don't jump back into a relationship. That's, that's what you kind of need to do, but you don't never have a, a relationship again. Mm. Well, some people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some do. yeah, but it's not, yeah, that doesn't have to be off the table. Okay like and my thing is if I'm if I'm totally honest I want to educate people that alcohol is the same or like addiction is the same everything is the same but we put things in different boxes and we go like oh no but that's really serious and you can't <laughs> ever drink again or but you can have a relationship again and I don't, it doesn't matter if you don't want to see it this way but maybe you've never heard it this way and I think it would be unfair of me not to share how I see that to just at least let people who want to hear that and see it a different way to to be open to oh what if you can drink again um what if there's a different way what if it isn't just the way that society says these things um so I think I'm a good example of that to be like I don't do things the way (laughs) (laughs) Things. I don't do anything the way everyone else does things. Like, I don't even get me started on business. <laughs> but, um, I, think there's, I think there's some real yeah. gold in there, some real gold nuggets in there. And it is a case, yeah. of, like, I think what you're saying here is we are open to be ourselves. And I think that has been a huge lesson that you and I have learned from each other because of the differences. There are many areas we are the same and we think the same and feel the same. And there are areas where we see things differently. And I think both of those are okay. And like you say, very often with these things, stuff is taken off the table. And it is, it's not whether someone comes out of the other side of an alcohol addiction it's not it doesn't matter whether they then find a way to drink that works for them or whether they don't the the point is to feel that they have had the choice that they have I know part of the conference is awake waking up to what's possible and I think as human beings we have no freaking clue what is possible for us whether it's around alcohol or business or relationships or art or whatever it is we do we kind of see this much possibility Uh, when there's like this much (laughs) and I know like both of us are a little bit we are kind of a bit mavericks and, and it's like right okay so what what is possible then if we if we just push the boundaries of these things and sort of say that and and I know your art does that the way you express what happened to you around your addiction does that and I know between you and me we see the different ways we do things and it's like wow what does this open up is possible (laughs) (laughs) and like I think one of the things that I feel like so many people like feel shameful when they've had an addiction or or things like that like I don't I'm like yeah it was brilliant it was like I'm like (laughs) no I don't mean it like that but I'm like I don't regret it I just think it's incredible what experience I was given for those 24 years to get if that's what I needed to get where I am now it's 
bloody amazing. Like, of course, that's what I need. We need the contrast. How are we supposed to understand it if we don't have the contrast? So I think it's absolutely incredible. And I feel so blessed that I was able to go through that and then almost like be given my gift of the art at the end. Like, cheers, God, for that one. <laughs> that's kind of how it feels to me. Like, right, you had all this shit you got through it here's your prize um and it also makes me sit think like when things come up that are a struggle for me I do often have the thought yeah but you got through the drinking like come on you got through that so if if you can do that you can do anything and it does feel like not every day (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but so, most days it does feel like yeah come on I've got the power I've got the power and I've got the universe like on my side what was that thing you shared the other day on Facebook that Beck was on about in that bible thing oh anything Every- is with 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 God anything is possible yeah. yeah Beck and I just had a real moment of kind of, and again it's this whole thing I just I'm really seeing and part of what I want to absolutely do at the conference is 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 bang this wide open I'm really seeing how many people and myself included how much we limit ourselves and wow what is possible and there's like you know we'd actually been talking about something in the business and and there was a personal thing as well and we were kind of saying well you know do you think and um we've been we've been reading this book that is blowing both of our minds about what is possible in all sorts of areas of our life and then back back this found this uh, sentence you know with God anything is possible and I know you know use the word source use the word universe use the word power behind life whatever it is but it's kind of like what we who we are you know what is underpinning all this there are no limitations we are the only thing if you like this power that we have to think is the only thing that that limits us and I love what you said about seeing the gift in how you limited yourself how much um, <laughs> how much contrast you created with the drink and what you were able to see from that and and see these things because i definitely I, I feel the same you know all um, anything that we go through in our life the sooner that we can see the gift in it no matter what it is then it's amazing what that opens up for us when we do that yeah it is and and I think um uh what was gonna say like going back to like when I quit the drink there had to be a time where I had to go to the extreme you have to go to the extreme don't you like from one thing to the other I think I think I don't know (laughs) it feels like it feels like you almost have to go to the extreme of what's you know what's you're struggling with or whatever yeah. um to then come back to the balance that thing that you did it all them years ago when you went yeah, this balancing, yeah. and I know Esther like I really love the law of attraction and Dominic and all them all that stuff and she talks about that don't she like one end of the stick and the other end of the stick yeah the, the, yeah, the, the yeah. So like yeah you again like like I said earlier with the relationship thing you come out of a shit relationship or whatever you have to go to the extreme and just be like I'm being single forever and all that um (laughs) that's like the space to um find the balance when that's ready but we just we seem to operate that way where we have to go to the extreme but I think what I was fortunate to see um was that the extreme wasn't the place to stay yeah you, you can't stay there because it's just the same it's the same it's just the other end yes so it was no different because the limitations were still there yeah it's the control and and you see this like when you look at unhealthy relationships or whatever it is you're either the victim or the bully if you like yeah. there's no in our society we tend to look at it and say the bully is the bad person and the victim you know is, is the victim and poor them but what I see from my experience of that is you know my experience of being the victim it's just there's no difference it's just insecurity it's just you it's the exact same the extremes are the exact same thing but just the other end of it and you're just yeah, and it's like, yeah it, it's no better 
but then there is a really really beautiful place of balance between these things that you can find which yeah. is really really beautiful place to come to and yeah absolutely totally see that I think that it feel, feels to me like that's what I found with with my drinking and you yeah. often do you often do I think we've all got both extremes in us and then we we have a tendency to be you know we have we have our go-to places don't we if we're low or whatever and a tendency to either be the bully or to, to be the, the the people pleaser or whatever the victim or we have a tendency to be addictive or we control in different ways but it's all it's all that and I'm there was a thing you mentioned uh just a little while ago about um shame and and things like this and I think one of the ways that we one of the ways that we really limit is limit ourselves is by not forgiving ourselves and I feel like we can we can ping between these two things if we can't get to a place of like shame and non-forgiveness and beating ourselves up and turning against ourselves is one oh we keep ourselves imprisoned in a horrible place from by doing that don't we yeah definitely it's, it's interesting with the with the alcohol and the addiction stuff as well because I want to talk more about this at the conference as well with just addictive behavior in general um <clears throat> and I think because I've seen how I did that with my drinking I've seen it in other areas and what I what I've been or what I do in different areas like with the with food as well like you know there's a whole big thing around food in the world that you have to eat healthy and all this stuff and I know us three here we're very much into being guided by eating what makes sense to us through wisdom in the moment which I think that was a huge insight years and years ago for me and I, I always battled with trying to lose weight and all this stuff and ever since I saw that I've just eaten whatever I want whenever I want pretty much and I just don't I just stay the same I don't even weigh myself I don't know but I stay the same build and look as far as I'm concerned I don't know I don't think it's anything to do with to do with what our mind creates of how we look but um what I see around that is like I watch other people like yeah maybe I'm not going to mention any people but I watch some people (laughs) I know (laughs) and um and it you know oh, oh don't waste that let's eat let's eat that because it's on the plate and all this and it's like I don't do that or do you want some more do you want some more no I'm full up thank you I'm full up and knowing ourselves in that way how is that any different to I used to keep drinking because I wanted to feel whatever and and I used to overeat because I would feel empty or like oh yeah 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 I just want to eat loads and feel good like try and fill myself up to feel good but I was overeating and, and I see that, I mean, I do it sometimes, but it's rare. I'm just like, no, because I don't feel like I'm lacking. I don't feel like I'm missing out. Oh, I'm going to miss out or I'm going to waste. I just don't buy into any of those stories. To me, it's more of a waste to put more food in my body that I'm going <laughs> to make me sick or whatever, you know. That your body doesn't want, yeah. Them. Yeah. more wasteful than throwing it away in my in my opinion that's how I I just see you know I just seen things like that and and I know that the more I'm not saying I always do do this very well and I definitely don't feel like I'm really great at, it at the moment but um the more I'm grateful and appreciative for things it is it like that sort of tends to ground you to the moment and if you're in that moment and you're just really focused on and and loving what is in that moment and appreciating it like you just know that you don't want any more that's it you like you're satisfied you're full up you yeah but it's 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 addictive because it's like oh just have more chocolate because it's there or I don't know or the pressure like the pressure as well like that was that's the drinking and, and I know a lot of a lot of people talk about that and I would be the world's worst for saying like oh you lot are boring because you don't want to drink I probably used to say it too I don't know but you and Beck and everyone and it was like oh, just drink man just get pissed let's have fun let's let's be cool like because I always wanted to be cool and now I just think I'm really cool that I <laughs> <laughs> but um it's all of that and then <laughs> people we, we're not very good at 
we want people to like us I think and, and so if someone's like oh come on have a drink you just go oh go on then because it's easier than saying no this is who I am and I I don't want to drink anymore or I don't want to eat any more food thank you I know you've put on loads but I don't want to eat it <laughs> comes down to this really doesn't it <laughs> you, it, it, it is the whole actually and I think we, deciding deciding who it is you want to be and what is right for you and that doesn't ha- you know we can change that it doesn't have to be but actually making a decision about who you are and who you want to be and then holding yourself gently and kindly and everything to that is incredibly helpful around things like that yeah and I also think to add to that it's like who it's who you are, are in that moment like yeah, as actually this I mean, it's not a fixed no it's, yeah I don't know it's it's interesting isn't it how how we just get so caught up in the easy way out like drinking was the easy easy route for me it's the easy way like oh yeah just drink <laughs> The thing with things like that is they're easy in the moment, but long term, they're very destructive and not easy. And it is actually, are we prepared to put in, make some, do something that's not quite so easy in this moment to actually make overall to make our life much, much more easy? Whereas just going for the like the quick fix in that moment rather than doing the internal work, rather, rather than actually looking at what is available and what is possible yeah definitely it is that yeah yeah <laughs> I don't know what else to say to it yeah <laughs> yeah it feels oh, like it's an effort or something to sort of I don't know turn the other way and do the other thing that looks hard but if you want the better lifestyle or you want yeah the true peace of mind you do the work thing mm-hmm. then it then it gets good <laughs> Yes. So, um, if people um, want to connect to you, Lucy, is there anything else you want to share before we? I know you said you, you... I was going to share about my book because I'm oh, going to. Oh, absolutely. Well, this that fits into it anyway. So, if anyone wants to connect to you, so yes, tell us about the yeah. book because I'm um, yeah, so, very uh, excited. About I am a published author as well, so I've I've written a couple of books, and I haven't written for a while, and and it's not really been something I've been too interested in. Um, but I had a bit of a me and me and Beck went my sister we went to the Viva conference in November and I'm trying to be more like listen to them nudges that feel good and just go like yeah I want to do that and this thing came to me after I spoke there and shared my story uh, about my sort of transformational drinking story and um this idea just came to me one morning I was like you need to write a book on addiction I was like hello you do, you do. It'd be, it'd be amazing. It'd be so amazing. I've actually, I was going to start it in January, but I already started it because I was just going to do it. Plan it. I don't really plan very much, but I wanted to kind of do a layout of all the things that I want, like the points that I want to get across. And some of what we've spoke about today is definitely going in the book and it's going to be expanded on. Um, and my book is definitely the title. I already have a title, which is not always, it's sort of, you know, you can do have a working title and change it, but... I love my title, which is Addiction, um, from Piss Artist to Abstract Artist. <laughs> it, that is just, that is you, isn't it? That sums you yeah, up. Definitely. So that's, like, the plan is, um, yeah, the plan is to write it within six months. And hopefully this time next year, it will be out and ready and, and stuff, depending on the process and the editing sometimes books yeah. and you know what life's like things take longer but the, the 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 kind of loose plan is to write it within six months and have it out by this time next year um yeah if anyone's interested in like I'm putting together and it isn't quite ready yet I'm hoping to get it ready for the 15th of January which will be my four years sober anniversary um a sample of the first kind of chapter or a sample of something anyway <laughs> whatever's ready by then um so you can you can just like find me on Facebook and connect with me on there Lucy Sheffield and um if you're interested in the book I'll uh yeah you can jump on the mailing list and take it from there really um yeah so that's where you can find me <laughs> basically on Facebook is where I hang out. <laughs> 
cool yeah and watch that watch this space with the book because i'm i i saw the 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 response you had to that so i know that there really is there's a lot of people that are really really interested in yeah that. i yeah. mean We've literally had just over half an hour here, so we haven't dived very deeply into, you know, no, anything no. near. And we wanted and to, then, yeah. to keep some of the gems for the conference. So come to the conference if you want yeah, to. Yeah, come to the <laughs> and, and I think, like, the point of the book is that, like, you know, when I was in conversation with that group the other night, it was like, there's 12 years to tell you about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, um, so the point of the book is to try and get as much as I can around what I see around addiction which I think is totally different to what society says um in the book so if you want to read my take on it then yeah yeah <laughs> I, I think it's just so so freeing to see that there are different takes on all sorts of things and it's not even necessarily saying you're right and something else is wrong but it's that's what I like that's what opens up to what's possible because to me it's like there isn't just one size fits all and one way for everybody there are so many ways and it's like if you if something isn't fitting and working for you there is something that is going to fit and work yeah. for you. go for that be dead be you you know be 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 do and be what's right for you which I really really see you do that and which is 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 really well you know it is it's and and that's what this is about really isn't it being daring to be you and and showing up and creating a life that really suits you and works for you so. yeah definitely definitely well, well thank you very much lucy yeah. <laughs> As, as we say i will put underneath uh, you know where you can contact lucy but obviously if you know me and you don't know lou <laughs> i can put you in touch <laughs> <laughs> yeah. take care lots of love bye bye